This show is brought to you by MainPerformancePCs.com. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing and a review of something that I've already reviewed a long time ago, but this is a new and improved version of the Accelerator Wheel Stand. And we actually did this review back in 2010 and called, called it kind of the couch rig because just the way it, it set up and went between your legs and it was just great for sitting on the couch. So uh, Mike at Accelerator Wheel Stands, I'd like to thank him for uh, getting in touch with us and, and wanted us to check out this new and improved version that's compatible with a lot more wheels and supposedly he's made some improvements to it. So I'm gonna start with just unboxing this, uh, then gonna put it together and put it through its paces. So let's get going. Starting with the unboxing here. Gotta say, the thing was nicely packaged. No damage at all in transit. And looks like it's nicely packaged inside as well. I think it feels a little beefier than I remember. Wow, it all comes out in one piece there. That's kind of neat. Uh, full assembly instructions here, it looks like. So, gonna get all the tools I need and then put this thing together for you guys, or for myself to test. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it all unpacked, and I've gotta say, probably one of the nicest packed rigs I've ever got. I don't recall it being powder coated originally, but I maybe it was, but nicely powder coated black was wrapped so nicely that none of this got scratched. But you know what? I'd rather have too much tape and too much packaging versus not enough and have this stuff get dinged around and uh, banged around. Also, there was a little sticker inside the packaging that said, go to xwstands.com and check out their assembly video. So I think I'm gonna do that just to for the heck of it, even though this looks pretty self-explanatory. Plus, full instructions. Uh, and it looks like he sent me the XL20, which is the regular versus the XL21 big boy stand. And Mike, just so you know, I'm kind of a big guy at over 6'4", 200 pounds. So hopefully the X XL20 will work for me. If not, you guys are gonna see. Maybe I'll have uh, uh, one of our my local friends, uh, Jason, come in and check it out as well and see how it fits him. He's uh, a little more on the regular side versus the big boy. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, go check out that video really quick. I did get my 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, it came with some uh, hex wrenches in here as well. Three different ones it looks like. Lots of bolts and nuts and all sorts of stuff. So I don't remember these from last time either, these nice billet clamps. So. Gonna check out the assembly video, uh, and then assemble this thing myself. Start putting it through its paces. So let's see what this thing's all about. Okay, well, as you can see, I have it all assembled here. And I have to say, man, Mike includes everything as far as nuts and bolts and everything you're gonna need to not only put this thing together, and by the way, I would check that as uh, assembly video. Definitely thorough enough, plus these instructions were very detailed and got me through it very easily. I mean, as simple as this thing looks, there are a few little intricacies as far as putting it together, but still pretty simple. And like I said, tons of extra hardware, stuff to mount shifters. If you have a G27 or Fanatic wheel, uh, needless to say, I don't need that. And uh, if you haven't noticed, I am running, or gonna run a TX racing wheel, and I just have the stock pedals. Uh, figured that'd be a better fit for this type of stand. This is definitely a console stand. So now that I've got it all assembled, I, I, I'm using a desk chair because my couch is way over there and my rig is over here and my console setup's over here. So I think this will work fine. A little tight. Uh, I guess I could move it back a little bit. Uh, and it still sits on the end, end of this chair pretty good, but not a bad setup. So I'm going to put it through its paces and let you guys know what I think, but uh, I'm all set. All right, so I've put the XL20 wheel stand through its paces and actually had a buddy of mine, Jason, come over and uh, he did as well. 
uh, before I get into too far into this, I gotta say, we really enjoyed racing with this thing. And I got some uh, comments from Jason uh, a little bit later that I'll share with you, but uh, yeah, I, I was pleasantly surprised and impressed with how stable this thing is. So first of all, before I get too far into that, I'm gonna start with the price. Uh, this particular stand goes for $179 and that comes shipped to your door. Uh, and it, you can get it uh, through his site at xwstands.com. If you go to his shop, it ends up taking you to Amazon or eBay. So you basically purchase it right through there. It's compatible with the Logitech G27, Fanatic Porsche wheel and the, uh, the CSR. Uh, also the T500 and the TX racing wheels, which is what I had attached to it or what I ran with it. I actually switched over to the GTE rim here. Originally was running with the two pedal set and this thing's also drilled for the T3PA pedals. So decided what the heck and I wanted Jason to try them too. Let's install that and they're drilled for that. So bam, hooked it up. Uh, also Mike at XW Wheel Stands has the older version that we had tried that is only about 115 bucks uh, and that's compatible with the DFGT. So you can check that one out as well. Uh, also did some little more research while I was at his site and the extra parts that I had, there was those long bolts uh, and then those other uh, black pieces. Those are for the shifter mount and the, the bolts are specifically for the Fanatic shifter. So if you're wondering what those are for and you have that wheel and shifter setup, there you go. So the way I set it up was actually in this chair, this desk chair, and it swivels and adjusts up and down if I want it to and, and actually has wheels on it. And the way I actually set it up was to, and to get closer to the TV because if you have this thing up on its, you know, portability stand like this, and then you sit down in your chair, you can't get close enough to the TV, which if you guys have noticed, I like to get pretty close and it, it just gives you a, a better field of view setting. Uh, or makes you feel more like you're in the car. But the way I, I actually got it to get closer was I was like using it like a, a, a walker that the elderly use and just kind of shimmied it into place and then got it down. I guess there's other ways I could have done it, but that just seemed to work for me. So comparing this to other wheel stands, you know, I gotta say that due to its design and the way these sit, you know, the, these feet sit on your chair, and then the, the way it, it sits on the ground, your chair doesn't, it doesn't allow your chair to move like this, which makes for quite a stable platform. I, I was, like I said at the beginning here, or I guess I'm halfway through the show, pleasantly surprised. And, and Jason said the same thing that he was surprised at how stable it was when he first looked at it. He's like, oh man, how's this thing gonna be? And he liked it a lot. By the way, Jason, my friend, local here uh, up in the Inland Northwest, uh, is a sim racer, has been for a long time and got to know him through sim racing and he may be helping with the show here and there. So figured, what the heck, let's put him behind the wheel of this thing and think, see what he thought. Back to the chair. One of the problems that I did encounter was my chair was just barely wide enough. So at one point, I guess I had it too far on this side and I don't have any footage of it. I wasn't filming at that point, but I'm driving along and all of a sudden phew, it fell off um, and not, it didn't fall on the ground, but it just kind of fell off. And I was like, what the heck's going on? It was almost like a mechanical breakdown. Uh, but you just got to make sure that you got it planted on your seat. And you know, I got to say also I'm, I'm six foot four and I, I didn't think that this stand, this, the standard stand, there's the standard stand and the big boy. I didn't think that this was going to be big enough for me, but it is, and my knees don't hit anywhere in here. I almost forget that the rig's there, to be honest. Uh, but it's a good fit. And honestly, the big boy, this right here, this width is 18 and a half inches on this particular stand. The big boy's 20 inches. So if I went with the big boy, I would have to figure out some kind of alternative to maybe put under my legs. And I was thinking maybe just a piece of plywood that's about this wide and about 22 inches long, and I just sit on that and then plant these two feet right onto that, and that would make for a nice, stable, solid platform. So if you're wondering what kind of chair you could use, I had another chair that wouldn't have worked. It wasn't wide enough. Um, but if you're wondering what you're gonna use, and you can use the couch. Problem with my couch, it's over there, and I didn't wanna move it all the way over here just to race on the Xbox. So this worked great though. Like I said, 
Once I got it all set up, this thing wasn't moving. And also another thing that it stops from you know, from happening is, you know, if you're using a desk chair, and I, I, I don't know what's gonna happen if you're on a hardwood floor or a tile floor or something like that, but due to these feet being on the chair, it stops it from moving back and forth. So I was actually able to lean back a little bit and I was really surprised at how comfortable it was. Okay, one more thing before I get to the pros and cons. My friend Jason's about five foot seven, five foot eight, and one thing that we noticed was that we didn't have to adjust it for the size difference, for the height difference. You know, just the way the, the stand, you know, moves. Um, I didn't have to adjust it here, you know, on uh, as far as right coming up into the deck. He originally put, put these down. By the way, these adjust if you want to, you know, make it a little bit shorter. Uh, but that was cool. Like I said, at five foot eight, and I'm six four. You know, that's a pretty wide gap there, and we didn't have to do any real adjusting for. You know, he reached the pedals no problem, and and that was really cool. So now I'm gonna get to the pros and cons. And first, get to the pros. Affordable, 180 bucks. I'd say that's a good price. You know, there's probably stands that maybe. Well, I'd say that's probably pretty much the cheapest. They're usually right around 200 or more. Um, so, and again, compared to other stands, it's, I think it's a lot more stable. Next, great for someone that's just getting into sim racing uh, or console racing. You know, it's a, it's a nice alternative. And I'm going to get to some other reasons why I think that in my final thoughts. But uh, next up, portable. You know, it basically folds up. The pedals fold up. Uh, and then you can just take it and stick it in your closet. So if your wife or your girlfriend or roommates or whatever don't like to see your rig sitting around or you don't want to have a rig that's you don't have space for it, this is a great option. Uh, next, you can use it on the couch. You can use it on a desk chair. Uh, as long as it's wide enough, like I mentioned, if not, you're going to have to come up with some kind of alternative or maybe, like I said, put a piece of plywood underneath your, your legs to, uh, to support it. But uh, that's another pro. Uh, stable is another pro. A lot more stable than I had anticipated. I, it's been a while, almost four years since we did the last review of this thing. And I remember it being pretty stable for what it was, but this thing's rock solid. Next up, adjustable. Uh, I could have shortened it, so someone even shorter could have driven it. Uh, it's adjustable here. And next as far as the adjustability, compatibility. Compatible with all the wheels, and this thing came with all the hardware to just attach right to the wheel. You know, I didn't have to go looking for hardware or go to the hardware store. Mike sends the nuts and bolts, everything you need to just attach your wheel and start racing. Actually, I would have liked, I had to use some double, actually here, let me take it apart here, show you guys what I used. I used these, uh, these Velcro strips that you can just, you know, wrap in a circle, work great. He recommends uh, electrical tape, but I recommend these Velcro strips if you can find them. They work really nice to, to run your cables. Now it's gonna take me to the cons. And first con, you need a chair wide enough to handle it. If not, again, you're gonna have to come up with some kind of alternative, but I'd say it'd be worth it. You know, just go to, the, go to Home Depot or whatever your local hardware place is and have them cut you know, a thin piece of plywood or something, you know, that's about 22 inches wide and just set it under your seat or maybe if you can, attach it to your chair or some, you know, something like that and it should work great. And then the next comment would be, if you're racing on the couch, you're gonna be sitting too far away. So I, as just as a general sim racing rule, I don't recommend sitting five, 10 feet away from the screen. And unless you can move your couch close to your screen, that could be a con. And that's honestly my final con which is gonna lead me to my final thoughts. Actually, I'm gonna rev scale it here really quick. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10 this time around. I'd say this thing definitely deserves an eight, especially comparing it to other uh, wheel stands on the market. Now, would I run this with iRacing, do some hardcore racing with it? No, because I've got Frankenrig there behind me, so I, I really don't need to, but for being able to just pull it out and do some console racing? Yeah, honestly, I would. I like it compared to some of the cheaper full rigs out there. Uh, and Jason pretty much echoed my, my thoughts too. He, he was pretty much saying the same thing and he was saying, he was the one that gave me the idea about the plywood. Um, but for Rivals mode, which is what we were doing, this thing's awesome. Another thing I wanna say, 
before I built a rig, and this is years before we started this show, um, I raced at a desk and in a desk chair. And so I had my, de my wheel clamped to it and always had to try to figure out something with the pedals. And if you're sitting at a desk and PC racing and you want a cheap alternative that you can put away and you don't have, this, is, this thing's awesome. And I would recommend it for it. You know, like I said, I don't need to because I've got that thing behind me, but um, I, I would highly recommend it for something like that. So another thing I, I would say to Mike, the guy that, that's selling this thing, you know, if there's a way he could create uh, a seat that goes along with us or you buy separately as an add-on that these, you know, these feet went into like two little cups, man, that would make for a one stable sim rig that I would rec highly recommend. So I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Uh, I really don't have anything else to say about it. Uh, I told you what Jason thought about it and... Uh, again, I highly recommend it. Go to xwstands.com. This one, again, goes for $179, includes shipping, and I'm, I think that's worldwide, uh, but you'd have to check with Mike at, at uh, XW Stands to make sure of that. And I'd like to thank Mike, speaking of which, again, for sending us this rig to, to review, and hopefully you've enjoyed it. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, come to our website, isrtv.com, to read this full review. I'm going to have it in writing, along with all of our other reviews that we've done in the past on rigs, uh, wheel stands, wheels, you name it. I'm Darren Ganji. Again, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.